Well, last week was JAMF's biggest week in the calendar year with the JAMF Nation User Conference, or JNUC, uh, occurring in Denver, Colorado. Joining me here is Josh Karekis, one of our senior systems engineers here at CompNow, who was one of the lucky four staff able to head across there. Josh, how are you going? Really good, Damo. Yeah, big week for you. Great week. Yeah, still a bit jet lag, maybe. Little jet lag, waking up at two in the morning at random mm -hmm. times, but yep. apart from that, I imagine some of that's due to jet lag, some of it due to excitement over all the amazing things you uh, learned. So much excitement. Yep, can imagine and super jealous. So um, let's uh, try and live vicariously through folks like Josh who are actually able to get to Denver for JNUC. And um, why don't we start, Josh, with one of the biggest topics in the Mac admin community at the moment, Platform SSO. So before we get into it, Mac OS 26 Tahoe expands the capability of Platform SSO to include additional workflows such as simplified setup, which allows for identity setup during the initial setup assistant, authenticated guest mode, which provides an expedited login for temporary users, and together with tap to login, allowing the use of NFC security keys to be able to log in with your watch or employee badge or an element in your iPhone wallet. Jamf Pro is ready to support these features with payloads already available to configure in Platform SSO. At JNUC 2025, we saw Jamf demonstrate this new simplified setup functionality using Okta Desktop Access, which is Okta's PSSO implementation. It was impressive to see it work so seamlessly, allowing the initial user account creation in the background and after the user authenticates via the Okta workflow. At the time of recording, Microsoft Entra does not yet support the new simplified setup workflow. However, we know Jamf is working closely with Microsoft to have this functionality supported soon. Awesome. And there's a Jamf web page, I think, that's going to keep us updated with all things PSSO? Yeah, see jamf.it slash PSSO for more information and updates on what platform SSO features are supported by the different identity providers. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've had um, Okta and Microsoft mentioned there, a lot of our education customers would be using Google for identity providers. What, what news do we have for them? Yeah, currently, Jamf Connect is currently the only option for cloud identity integration with macOS, but we recommend submitting your feedback to Jamf and Google to provide platform SSO in the future. Awesome. Squeaky wheel will get the oil on that one, maybe. So, looking on to our next topic, so APIs are building blocks to automate and extend and innovate across your Jamf environment and integrate it with other services. Uh, they've been a big part of my shortcuts work, so this is an area I'm super interested in, and I understand we've got some API changes that are kind of in line with Jamf's move earlier in the year to platform licensing away from individual product licensing with Jamf for Mac, Jamf for mobile, and Jamf for K12. Yeah, Jamf introduced the fully featured Jamf platform APIs, which provides a unified, predictable way to build across the entire Jamf platform, whether you're building a quick custom workflow or a large-scale enterprise solution. No longer need to juggle different API styles or different versions of documentation. With platform APIs, everything is consistent, which means faster onboarding, fewer bugs, and building with confidence. I've got to say I love the keynote with Dan McLaughlin, um, mm -hmm. vibe coding a Slack bot live on stage utilizing the new platform APIs. Um, be sure to check out this year's keynote on YouTube for the demo. It's a great demo. At the time, we were all praying to the demo gods for Dan, and it worked out really great in the end. Yeah, I think he must have sacrificed a Vision Pro or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, be sure to check out developer.jamf.com to get all the information you need and get started. Moving on to AI and automation now. So uh, last year at JNUC 2024 in Nashville, which I was able to make it to, Jamf introduced the AI Assistant, which allowed Apple admins to ask the assistant about patch management and update compliance using natural language and receive easy to understand answers. This year, Jamf have added some more functionality. Yes, the explain tool troubleshoots complex scripts and policies, reverse engineers intent from your legacy setup, and can even generate documentation from your existing environment. You can ask it to debug why a policy keeps failing, understand what a predecessor script actually does, mm -hmm. or document a, your smart group logic for the next admin who might inherit your setup. Uh, and the search tool transforms inventory analysis. No more tedious clicking and manual query building. You can ask out questions like, which Macs in finance have Chrome versions with cri critical vulnerabilities? Or find me the most common IDEs in the engineering department and tell me if they're up to date. The search tool can write sophisticated queries on the fly, turning what used to take 20 minutes of clicking and query building into one simple conversational ask. 
One of my favorite AI assistant demos at JNAC was when they were configuring a new blueprint and they asked the AI assistant if any of the configurations in the newly created blueprint would conflict with traditional configuration profiles already configured and applied to devices. The assistant quickly came back with the exact config profiles that would conflict and provided the settings they would need to modify or remove from these config profiles to prevent the conflict. There are so many times when I inherited an existing Jamf Pro environment not knowing what had been configured and scoped, and if new policies I had put in place would conflict with anything existing, the new AI assistant functionality would save me so much time and effort. Uh -huh. The AI assistant works across the entire Jamf platform, including Jamf Protect. When a Jamf Threat Labs alert is presented, how do you know if it's a real threat or a false positive? Uh -huh. Asking the AI assistant to investigate will provide a concise summary, risk assessment, and suggested actions. Mm. I think you won everybody over when it was like, oh, what have my predecessors done here? Being able to just get the AI to uh, do what would otherwise take a lot of sleuthing around in your new role, uh, amazing. Um, to move on to one of the newer approaches to device management, one that I'm only just learning more about now, infrastructure as code, Josh. For those who don't know, and I didn't know before I attended this year's JNUC, infrastructure as code means managing your IT systems the same way that developers manage their code. Instead of manually configuring Jamf through the user interface, with, with infrastructure as code, configuration is stored in a version control system, such as Git. Using IAC end-to-end -end workflows ensures that operations are highly consistent, testable, and controlled even at an enterprise scale. As someone that is not a developer, my coding knowledge is limited to bash scripting, PowerShell, and some YAML here and there, I really appreciate when I'm provisioning a brand new Greenfields Jamf Pro instance, I can push a consistent tested configuration every single time. Using IAC is also invaluable in keeping separate Jamf Pro environments in sync. For example, in a dev test prod scenario, where changes are made in one environment and then pushed consistently to another. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, definitely something that we've seen a lot of in the Mac admin world, like using sort of Git operations and that sort of stuff, CI, CD type approaches too. So, um, well, there's another way for us to be able to use Jamf to manage devices. Awesome. So following this sort of GitOps approach to device management is something we've started to hear more and more about in the last few years. So really great to see that Jamf have provided a new way to use their platforms. All the same, it's gonna be an area many of us have to learn a lot about. Um, moving on to uh, declarative device management and blueprints. So Apple's Jeremy Butcher said in the keynote, we've been talking for so long about DDM being the way of the future. We need to remind ourselves that uh, particularly after this year's version 26 releases, DDM is the present. Absolutely, yes. Jam's answer to declarative device management is blueprints. Think of blueprints as your management recipe, the ingredients, every app, every setting, each permission, configuration profiles, declarative configurations. What's awesome about them, Jamf keeps them in sync with Apple's latest specifications, so updates reach devices faster than ever. In the past year, Jamf have added 12 declarations and 34 configuration profiles, with more coming soon. At JNUC, we saw Jamf demo new DDM settings deployed via blueprints, such as passcode policies, disk management, software update settings, as well as restrictions. And I gotta say, I'm excited to start using blueprints more in future engagements. Absolutely, they're gonna make life really easy. And uh, I think one of the demos as well was around a software update blueprint, where you said, this is how I want software updates to happen without tying it to a specific version that you then need to update for the next one as it comes down. So there's gonna be a lot, of, a lot more of that sort of really time saving and uh, simplifying type stuff that blueprints are gonna give us too. Absolutely. So um, those are the biggest ticket items from our point of view here at CompNow from uh, JNUC 2025 in Denver, Colorado. So uh, before we leave you though, just a quick shout out to Aussie presenters uh, from Jamf, Marcus Ransom, Dan McLaughlin, who did a session as well as that charmed demo in the keynote as well. Stu McDonald co-presented with Martin Puron from Seek. And uh, we also had Nick Freeland from Up give a great presentation as well that I can't wait to, to be able to watch that on YouTube. So um, given Jamf's long history of supporting the Mac admin community, it's safe to say that your local meetup will be a great place to hear more about all things JNUC, Melbourne Apple admins, Sydney Mac admins, 
Brisbane Apple Wranglers, Apple Admins Adelaide, Perth Apple Admins, and the newest kid on the meetup block, Canberra Apple Admins. I think I've got a sticker right there. So you can watch the keynote and the State of the Union sessions for education and commercial for free on YouTube with the full range of sessions publicly available in a month or so. Well, Joss, it's been awesome to have you join us uh, for this video and share your experience over there in Denver. It's Thank been you, great Jamie. to have you. Thanks. And uh, if you need any more information on JNOC 2025, JAMF in general, or managing Apple in your environment, contact your CompNow account manager or email info at compnow.com.au.